Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to another rendition of Raiders of the Story Arc. This is where I take the first few episodes of a nostalgic show and see if it still holds up. With that said, um... X-Men! Jesus, with pork and beans, I fucking loved X-Men. This was the badass cartoon that kids watched. The cartoon that made you feel tough and rebellious, but it actually had a good story and good characters to back it up as well. But is it a story that still holds up, or is there just too much corniness to make it work? Now I know what you're thinking. Did the Nostalgia Chick already review the X-Men cartoon? Well, <laughs> Obscurus Loop already did The Room, Mike J already did Jaws 3, and the Distressed Watcher already did Dungeons & Dragons. Why give a shit now? Anyway, it's not like I'm gonna do my own Dark Nella saga or anything. Dark Rob! Dark Rob! Dark Rob! Piss off! Well, with that said, let's take a look at the first few episodes of X Men. So the show starts, and I have to admit, I get the chills. Whenever that song plays, I hear nothing but awesomeness. It's the coolest thing ever. I get this overwhelming urge to kick some ass. After that awesome opening, we get our first episode, Night of the Sentinels, Part 1. We start off with the mutant Sabretooth, who, oddly enough, has nothing to do with this episode. After throwing a car at a cameraman, who has somehow filmed this entire event completely still and miles high in the air, we cut to a concerned mother and... Ray from the real Ghostbusters, who are talking about their daughter. But how could you register her with that mutant control agency as if she were some sort of criminal? It's an outreach program to help these unfortunate people. Let's just hope the neighbors never find out our beautiful Jubilee's a mutant. So this is Jubilee, a young girl who's always dressed like she's about to do the dishes. In the rain. But little do they know that a mechanical visitor is about to cross their paths. What if we were wrong? What if she isn't a mutant? Are you kidding? Look what she did to the VCR just by touching it. Well, to be fair, that's what happens when most women touch a VCR. Ah! Oh, yeah, come on, get the VCR to stop blinking 12, I dare you! I fucking dare you! So this giant machine is known as a Sentinel, a government-built robot designed to track down mutants. Um, subtle. You could just send cops or military for something like that, but no, we need gigantic killer machines to apprehend teenage girls who raided April O'Neil's closet. No wonder the economy's in the toilet. Ah! Good God! We get upset when our policemen use bad language! How the hell would we ever let this destructive can of Campbellson fly? Hello, mutant registration program. One of your fucking robots just broke in and destroyed my mall! Jesus Christ, the property damage is unbelievable! Well, sir, did you keep the receipt for the mall? No. Then we have nothing to discuss. Oh my god, it's coming back! <laughs> have a nice day, sir. So it turns out the mutant outreach program really is designed to reach out and grab mutants, whether they like it or not. Help! But fortunately, this mall is also the shopping place for Storm, another mutant who I swear thinks that she's in a J.R.R. Tolkien novel. Storm, mistress of the elements, commands you to release that child. Go back to the shadow, flame of moon. She helps save Jubilee along with another mutant named Rogue, who I swear to God has only gotten hotter with time. Come to mama. Put me down, you flying Freak. You wouldn't ever have to put me down, Rogue. Baby, just look at us. All this time and we're still in love. Something like this just... She's a series of painted lines! Of Southern Home Perfection. 
And there's also the Cajun Gambit. Where you going, Petit? Anywhere but here. Who may actually have the strangest casual wear out of all the X-Men. And that's saying a lot. I mean, sure, Jubilee looks stupid, but I can at least tell what she's wearing. With Gambit? What is half that stuff? Run, girl! Run! <laughs> Who are you? Cyclops. So they take her back to Xavier's school for the gifted, which ironically never shows anybody teaching or learning anything throughout the entire series. She breaks out of her room and starts snooping around, coming across other mutants like Beast, um, sort of, closer, there you go, and Morph. Wait a minute, Morph? Who the hell is Morph? My fellow Americans, I am an idiot. <laughs> Oh yes, I forgot. Morph was a character who was never in the comics. He was created specifically just for the animated show. Why? Well, so he could die. Yeah, I know I'm giving it away, but he was just made up so they could kill him. He's basically just the Michael Bien of animated cartoons. He shows up, dies, we feel sorry, and then we totally forget about him. You might as well just change his ex to R.I.P. That's all he's known for. But I digress. Xavier, the telepath who runs the place, figures out Jubilee's escaped, and of course, she panics. Code 3. We have an intruder. Come on! Oh, just do it! Randomly smashing the keyboard accepted. Betty, this is no place for you. So she enters the danger room, the training grounds for the X-Men, and... Jesus! Do lawsuits just not exist in this world? This place is every personal injury attorney's wet dream! And then we see everyone's favorite badass himself. There you are, Wolverine. I mean it. Nobody tops this guy in badassity. How badass is he? His voice is a mix between the Dark Knight and Popeye, and yet he's still badass. I go where I wanna go. He hops around in yellow spandex and a poorly cut Mickey Mouse hat, and yet he's still badass. He gets an Australian Broadway dancer to play him in the movie, and yet he's still badass. He can strike this pose, which I'm comedically going to play back and forth right now, and yet he's still fucking badass. In fact, I put it to you. Has there ever been anything Wolverine related that has not been entirely badass? Yeah, but he was badass in it. So what's the first thing in this show that this ultimate badass is going to do? Don't hurt him. Okay, that was a puss out. But everything else he's done is badass! Is the child all right? They were fighting, and I wanted to help him. Don't worry, Petit. You just heard Wolverine's pride. That's all. Speaking of pride, should I be disturbed that my outfit is pinker than yours? Come with me, child. I shall explain who we are. So Storm explains to Jubilee, as well as the audience for that matter, what mutants exactly are. No one knows who will be a mutant at birth. We discover our extraordinary powers at about your age. This sort of pinpoints our whole symbolic prejudice thing. It's about gays. Look at what they're wearing. Professor Xavier is our leader, and he has named us the X-Men. This is Professor Xavier's School for the Gifted. And Hamburger University. We X-Men learned something very special here, Jubilee. <laughs> How to control our mutant powers for the benefit of mankind. You know, I forgot how much of a fucking show-off Storm could be sometimes. It's ironic because her powers could save the day every time by just summoning a tornado or something, but no, she uses lightning bolts and, I don't know, moves clouds and shit. This is actually a common complaint from X-Men fans and, yeah, it pisses me off. Next scene. That ID photograph is from the Mutant Control Agency registration files. Somewhere in there are the registration files of hundreds of mutants. So we get them, and we shred them. So they find out where the headquarters is and decide it's time to take action. Professor Xavier, we've been together for a long time. But when you formed the X-Men, was it not to teach us to use our powers to benefit mankind? Professor, aren't we? I know what you're going to say, Cyclops, but I'm afraid we have no choice. No choice? You're just jumping into terrorism! I didn't hear anything else discussed! You didn't even talk about any other options! But it turns out Jubilee escapes AGAIN! You know, for all their high-tech gadgetry, they sure do have shitty security. As she just 
walks by a gigantic killer robot that surprisingly can manage a pretty good hiding place. Wait, well, have you ever noticed her powers are pretty inconsistent? She can knock Wolverine across the room, almost take off the head of a sentinel, and now it's like... Dude, that's annoying. Don't make me step on your head. She gets gassed again and passes out, just as the rest of the X-Men figure out she's gone. I'm going after her. No way, Wolverine. We've got a job to do first. Out of the way, Gumbo. Gambit. Let him go. Ah, uh, he's not worth it. Oh! Oh! What the fuck? Don't you ever look before you throw those things? What? You're not even gonna turn around? Okay, fine. Here's some laser in the back of your head. So the rest of the X-Men go to the mutant registration to carry out their mission. As they discuss something you'll hear quite a lot in this show. Angst. You're supposed to know everything, Beast. What makes us like we are, anyway? Gamma rays, pollution, ozone depletion, <laughs> television, progress. Really? Because I heard from the conservative right that we chose to be this way. But it turns out Wolverine joins the gang as he couldn't find Jubilee and they sneak into the place. It looks like clear sailing from here. <laughs> and thus ends part one as we begin part two in the next episode. Oh, wait, right after we have one of those classic episode recaps. Just hope the neighbors never find out our beautiful Jubilee's a mutant. Gavin will help you! Who are you? Cyclops. There you are, Wolverine. I'm not gonna kill Jacob, Ben. You are. Shields up, red alert. Batman was tied to a mattress. I am your father. No! Silent Breed is people! I just wish I knew what was happening in there. As we open in the next episode, we see Wolverine can smell the gun oil and they bust their asses, allowing them to sneak in and destroy all the names in the files. While that's going on, we figure out the location of poor Jubilee. Well, to give credit, that does look like a typical Detroit building. Wake up. I want to ask you some questions, Jubilee. And that is a typical Detroit welcome. You know, maybe the show is more realistic than I give it credit for. Who are these so-called X-Men? Gyrick, why did you bring that mutant here? Who is she? <laughs> I love how that's the first question he asked. There's a girl strapped to a table, obviously held there against her will, and his question is, Who's that? That doesn't look like the other girls would kidnap and hold hostage. Who's that? Shut up and eat your White Castle! So the files are destroyed and the X-Men try to escape. Gambit, blow that fence! No, we're playing that again. <laughs> Hey, my dear to young man, <laughs> yes, I am. Didn't I tell you? Clear sailing all the way. Look out! An ironic twist to what you just said! Wolverine, pull back! Ah! What's wrong, Gene? It's more... Can't you feel it? It's as if millions of expendable voices cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I don't sense anything. So we get sort of a weird edit as we jump forward to after the battle, and we find out that Morph didn't make it. And let's be honest, you're all a little happy. I mean, if you had to hear this again, <laughs> I, you'd be kind of happy. Soldier boy here left him behind. For all we know, Morph and Beast may still be alive. Beast is... What about Morph? Well, put it together, Ape Man. Let's see, if Beast is alive, then Morph... Uh, if Beast is alive, that means Morph... Uh, Beast... Morph... Beast... Morph... Beast Morph... Oh, hey! I get it now! That really sucks! Wolverine! Tell Cyclops I made him a convertible. What happened isn't his fault. Wolverine! It's not your fault. Alt either. Hey, sweet, a convertible. So Wolverine has a flashback to... just an hour ago. Again, weird editing. And recalls how Morph was killed by just a zap of a laser. And yet Beast gets zapped with the laser and electrocuted on the fence and somehow comes out okay. Beast! I'll get him! Oh, and Rogue gets zapped too. You know what? Maybe Morph was just a pussy. You ever think that? Maybe he was just a giant fucking pussy. It's adamantium tasting time.
time, boys. Please don't show this in the commercial for the show. Hey, I can see my house from here. So we see Cyclops tells the team to retreat, and Beast gets left behind. I want to ask you some questions. Another time. It's your funeral. I'll be back. Don't worry, he'll only stay in prison for the rest of the whole fucking season. Seriously, what was up with that? Flash to normal time, and we see that the President of the United States was in on the whole Sentinel thing all the time. Sort of. You wanted to see me, Madam President? I wanted to congratulate you and Dr. Trass. I also wanted to tell you to stop all activities involving your privately run mutant registration program. Why? Did they have good reason to be threatened? I don't know, this still seems fishy. I just can't see a president signing a bill allowing giant mechanical robots to invade our personal freedoms and... Okay, y'all know where I'm going with this. But the X-Men have a plan to find the Sentinel's base. They lure one of them out by showing up to Jubilee's house and try to follow him. Surrender, mutant. Of course. Not. Oh, he just pulled the not line. The line every second grader used when he knew for a fact that he had nothing clever to say. Snap, Cyclops, snap. Returning to base for repairs. Ah! Also remember to replace the radar that showed when I was obviously being followed because I am probably obviously being followed. So the Sentinel crashes into the headquarters, because I guess it's hard to fly with one arm, and this allows Jubilee to escape, only to be caught again. She was pretty useless, wasn't she? No, I just want to go home. Jubilee, Doc! Hell with your pansy fireworks, I have a pussy pink laser ray to save us! So Cyclops gets zapped and Gambit does his car tricks, Rogue... <laughs> Jesus! Y'all ought to learn how to behave. Oh, that's right. It's Rogue! She gets up like she's Wily fucking Coyote! God, I love her! She's so friggin' hot that even the Sentinels are humping the air looking at her! No, I'm totally serious. Look! Oh, yeah. This guy's harder than solid metal. Oh, yeah. But then Wolverine comes in to stop it. Oh, come on, man. It's like guy rule number four. Let him finish. So even though the bad guys get away, they destroy all the Sentinels and their home base, and welcome their newest decoy, I mean crew member, Jubilee to the X-Men. You'll welcome to visit us, won't you? Does a mall baby chili fries? Uh, that's bad 90s talk for no, no she won't. They never show up in the series again, just assume a dog ate them. And thus ends the story arc of X-Men. After so many years, does it still hold up? Well, it's a pretty solid intro for kids. The characters are pretty well introduced, the idea of mutants and prejudice is well shown, and it didn't feel like it needed to talk down to kids. Too much. Okay, there's a lot of things that are silly, and I'd be lying if I said it meant Batman or Animaniac levels, but as kids' shows go, it holds up pretty well. It has decent action, well-developed characters, a passionate story. It was a show that felt big. Every event that happened felt like a big event. There's a lot of goofy moments, but there's a lot of kick-ass moments too. And you can tell that it wasn't just another comic show that was made for children. They put a lot of actual effort into it. And it definitely shows. It may not be perfect, but by God, it's friggin' awesome. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Of course, not.